<clears throat> welcome to um, welcome to Cross Point um, Church uh, Bible Study. I'm excited tonight about what we're going to be talking about. Um, we're going to be in first. Uh, I'm sorry, Second Corinthians chapter nine. Second Corinthians chapter nine. Second Corinthians chapter nine. I'm, uh, we're going to be dealing with um, uh, and understanding how to uh, sow. Um, and, and this is going to make a little more sense as um, we start walking through. Uh, Jesus constantly talks about sowing, sowing, sowing. He uses the examples of sowing, be it time, be it um, our resources, um, be it uh, seeds uh, of the word uh, into the hearts of the people. <clears throat> and so we want to look at that aspect tonight because as believers, we need to understand what we need to invest in and what we don't need to invest in. Can somebody say amen? amen. We need to know or be able to um, identify if it is good ground as we talk about uh, that we are uh, dealing with, okay? Because sometimes, and I think this is the frustration of a lot of believers, is that, is that we are well-meaning, we are loving, um, but when we give people a chance, oftentimes it doesn't end real good. And so it's not that, and this is a conversation I have with a lot of believers, that they're frustrated because they're saying, hey, I was just trying to be the uh, great Christian. I was just trying to help them. I was just trying to, you know, do this and do that, and, and they turn around and burn me. Now, this will happen. I mean, people are people. Amen? But God gives us a spirit of discernment through his Holy Spirit, according to his word. In 1 Corinthians, what, 14? And so we have to be able to exercise that discernment by recognizing, you know, where do I invest in? Is this good to invest in? And watch this. If it does not pan out like I expect, then I'm okay because I understand people at different levels. I understand that <clears throat> when I do things, sometimes it takes time to develop. Amen? Amen, I'm gonna make it a little more clear. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter nine, uh, verse six. And I'm gonna read all the way down to verse number eight. <clears throat> so if you're, I encourage you, if you are uh, viewing this um, over media, uh, to um, read along with us. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 6. Let me read. And it says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will be, uh, you will abound in every good work. Can you say amen? Okay, we always hear this verse, all right? We always hear people talk about God loves a cheerful giver, amen? And normally that's associated with what? all the time. Tides, giving, money. And so um, we limit the scope of that. Uh, uh, many times uh, churches have uh, and, and ministers have uh, squeezed that down talking in regards to just one aspect. But when we take this scripture and we expand it to it, the depths of its meaning, you will find that it, uh, it goes across the board. So it's not just money but it's in your service. It's not just in your service, it's in your attitude, it's in your heart, it, it's, it's your actions toward other people, amen? And so when we walk through this, I, I just want, I'm gonna show you these things because, because if we're gonna be the best Christians, if we're gonna get the most back out of life, we have to understand this principle that God has put in his word, that if you are stingy, you're not gonna get much out of life. Who is quiet. If you are generous, then you will reap generosity. Okay? And so, so God, throughout the word of God, 
you know, we always have these colloquialisms like you can't be God given. Anybody remember that? Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's not in the Bible, but you know, that's what we say. Why? Because God is saying that if we give generously, it's going to come back even more. So, amen. But again, I always say this before we get started, because people will take that and they'll start saying to themselves, man, so if I give $1, I'm going to get a bunch back. It may not come back that way. Because of the generosity of your heart, because of your intentions, it may come back a different way. Amen. All right, let's walk through this. Let's, let's take a look at this. Okay, <clears throat> if we go back, it says, it says, now this is Jesus talking. I mean, I'm sorry, this is Paul talking. <clears throat> and he says, watch this. He says, remember this. And so if you're looking in your Bible, you say, okay, I need to remember this. If, if, if the word of God is saying, remember this, this is what I need to do. Remember this. Keep this in your mind. If I sow sparingly, I will also reap or I will, I will harvest. I will get back sparingly. So if you're a stingy person, don't expect to get a lot back. Amen? Uh-uh. It says, whoever sows uh, generously will reap generously. I think that's one of the, the areas when you're talking about being believers that we have to grow in. We have to, we have to learn to be more generous. We have to learn to be uh, more open with um, the resources that God has given us. Because if God has given us an overabundance, what is it to help somebody out here now? If you got three cars in the driveway, can you give somebody a ride in one of them? Mm, okay. Uh, God calls us to treat people the way what? We want to be treated. He talks about that golden rule. Love people the way you want to what? Be loved. If you want a friend, show yourself what? Friendly. Friendly. And so when we're talking about these areas, we're talking about these things, we see that they fall right in line, that what you put out there, you're probably going to get back. Amen. But you can't give what you don't have. Amen. But that's why we have to lean on God's spirit, because he has given us all spiritual blessings. Amen. According to his word. So we have a lot to give as believers. The question is, can we cut through our carnal nature to accomplish that? Amen? Okay, so, so we see the principle that is laid out that, that if you are stingy in your investment into people or into uh, things, then you're not going to get a lot back. If you're generous in your investment in people and things, then guess what? You're going to get a lot back. He says, each man should give what he has desi decided in his heart to give. That's why it's so important if, you know, you're in church and, you know, and, and, and I don't care what somebody says. They may say, hey, you know, we need to meet budget and, you know, we need givers to give X amount. If you're sitting there and you're saying to yourself, man, goodness, I don't want to give, man. Oh, my gosh, I don't feel like mm, you could have kept your money. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver because here's the thing is that God is going to bless. Uh, he's going to bless what you give willingly. The Bible says he wants willing what? Workers. Thank you. God wants willing workers. God doesn't want to. He can't use stingy workers. He needs willing workers. He is not trying to hunt, hold a spiritual gun to our head to go out and to help people and to evangelize and this, that, and other. God's not, he's not like that. He wants us to love to go and to represent him. Amen? And so the Bible says that if we do these things, we have to decide in our heart, are you going to be stingy in 2 Corinthians chapter 9? As it says, verse number six, are you going to be stingy or are you going to be generous? And he says, each man has to decide in his heart what to give. Are you going to be a giving person or not? And so we fight every day, all day long, you know, how much to give? How much time do I give to this person? How much money do I invest over here? How much of my resources do I share with other people? All day long, we are thinking about should I be giving or not? Should I be generous or sparing? 
But if you look at the word of God, you see that God tries to put us at ease. <clears throat> he says he doesn't want you to give reluctantly, number one. Number two, he doesn't want you to give under compulsion. So, so what that means is that as, and I'm going to talk about in the church atmosphere, I should not be manipulating you. I shouldn't be, you know, pulling your strings and saying, you know, if you don't give, you cursed. And all that kind of stuff. You don't sow a thousand dollars, you're cursed. You're going to miss your blessing. And all that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, if I don't want to give and I give, I missed it anyway. Amen. <laughs> Can I get it? Boy, y'all quiet. Y'all like, yeah, man, man. Watch, watch this. So, 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 so don't give under compulsion. And it says, for God loves a cheerful giver. And the way we be truly become cheerful givers is that we understand why we're giving what we're giving. Amen. When we really understand, okay, I'm, I'm giving this because I want to see the, the kingdom increase. I want to be an example. I want to be a light. And this is the way I do it. Now, I'm going to show you in scripture as we keep on going down uh, that that is the exact case. So if we could, I, I want to just relate something to you. Go to Matthew chapter 13. Keep your thumbs on 2 Corinthians chapter 9. We're coming right back to that. But I want to show you uh, uh, four areas Christ talks about when you're talking about the different kind of grounds. It's Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Four types of ground. And uh, this is a familiar parable to many. And so Christ uh, he, he talks about the four different soils, the four different grounds that the seed uh, of, uh, of the word, or the word which he calls the seed, is sown in. Are you there? Verse number 18, amen. And it starts off. <clears throat> yeah. And he says, listen then to what the parable, I'm going to start at 17. It says, for I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous men long to see what you see but did not see it, and hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen then, okay? A lot of people wanted to understand this, all right? He says, listen then what the parable of the sower means. He says, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one, talking about the devil or his minion, uh, come and snatch away what is sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path or the wayside. That's one. The one who received the seed, he's talking about the word, that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy, but since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. And when trouble and persecution come because of the word, he quickly falls away. So that's on the stony ground. That's the second one. He goes on to say, the one who received seed that fell among the thorns, this is the thorny ground, is the man who hears the word, but he worries but the worries of, his, of this life and the deceitfulness of riches or wealth choke it out, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good ground or good soil, on fertile ground, is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding some hundred, sixty, or thirty times, or thirtyfold, what was sown. Amen? So if you hear preachers talk about it, and we'll, we'll pray and say, we pray it come back a hundredfold, this is where that comes from. We're praying that, uh, the church is praying that what you sow in monetarily, what you sow in spiritually, what you sow in in righteous behavior and obedience, that it would multiply in your life. Amen? Just like we were talking about in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 that what you sow is not necessarily limited to money. So 
I don't want anybody in the church to think or anybody here or anybody, you know, viewing this to think that that when I'm sowing and looking for a return, it has to always be money. Now, praise God, support the church, support ministries. Amen. Amen. But there are plenty of people that are in the um, that are in churches all over. And what they will do is that they will come in and they will write big checks. They will give consistently, but they'll leave right out and live however. And they'll believe that, hey, you know what? I came and I supported the church. But God is not looking for a part-time Christian. He needs you to what? Be full-time Christian. You know, they always talk about secret agents. You know, we all secret agents. You don't ever know who's a Christian many times around you until you go, oh, man, bless the Lord. Oh, amen. <laughs> man, you scared me. <laughs> you a believer? You go to church? Are you sure? No, you know. Can't even believe they go to church. You know, I'm like, wow. Are you serious? Mm. Uh, anyway, all right. So, so watch this. Let me talk about these different souls because if we're believers, and we are, amen, amen. We need to know or recognize that when we sow into wherever, whoever, whatever, we need to know that guess what? Sometimes it, things don't work out like we want to, okay? Sometimes it takes time, all right? Especially when we're dealing with people. And I think that's the biggest frustration with believers is that when we try to help folks, amen? We give them money or we, we try to invest time in them and, and, and we, we're wondering why they're not uh, reacting the way we want them to, why they're not changing, why our kids not changing, uh, our spouses are not changing, our, our, you know, our neighbors, our family, and on and on and the other believers in the church. And, and so and I think we can see, generally speaking, in these four examples, what we're dealing with. So... If we look back and we see that in verse number 18, we're talking about uh, Jesus is talking about the word being sown in people's heart. That's what we're doing all the time. As believers, we are sowing. We're sowing into people's lives. Amen. So you're either sowing, uh, you know, on good ground or on shaky ground. Amen. Da, 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 da. No, y'all remember that song? Okay. There you go. Let me move on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> thank you, brother. Thank you. All right. Watch this. So he talks about number one. He says, um, he says that that um, that seed of the word was sown on a heart. Watch. We're talking about this wayside heart. In verse number nineteen, it says that when it was sown, the person didn't understand it. And the evil one came in and snatched it right up. Many times as believers, we are trying to help folks. And they don't understand what we're trying to do. So here's the thing is that we have to look at ourselves and we have to say, wait a minute. So am I clear at how I'm trying to help them? Do they understand what I'm saying to them? Because sometimes we can be so churchy. You ever heard that saying you can be so heavenly minded, you know, earthly good? That we can come at people and we can be up here. And, and they're like, man, I don't even know what you're talking about. Many times when I'm out, if I'm talking about somebody or whatever the case may be, and, you know, and I'll use Bible references or whatever the case may be, a lot of times they're looking at me like, what? And so I have to back up. Because here's the thing, they, they never even read the Bible. They don't even believe the Bible. So I have to make sure that I'm not up there, you know, just throwing down with verse after verse after verse. Said, you better believe the Bible. You got to believe the Bible. And they're like, I never even read the Bible. I don't even know if it's true or not. So I have to find, I have to understand that I have to come at it a different way. Amen. Because you may be frustrating yourself at your job, with your children, with those that you love, because you are trying to sow something that they don't understand. Who is quiet in here? All right, all right. Watch this. So, so they don't understand it. And, and so, so they reject because they don't understand it and you're not connecting with them in some form or fashion, they don't understand, they reject it. 
Okay? And when they reject it, then guess what? It leaves room for the enemy to come in and replace what you've been saying. So you come in and you're saying, you need to live right. I need a spiritual leader and I need this, that, and the other, right? They don't understand what you're talking about. What you're talking about? You know, I go to church with you. You know, I mean, I didn't, I wasn't mad. I went. Well, you didn't get nothing out of it, <laughs> you know, and all that kind of stuff. And then they get upset and they reject it and say, man, you know what? Man, I don't even feel like going with you anymore because the enemy has come in because of how you communicated with them. You didn't come to them and say, you know what? This is why, this is what it means to be a spiritual leader. This is why I need you to be in a certain position or to have a certain understanding about the word of God because of this, 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 and this, where it connects with them. Does that make sense? Because if you don't do that, people reject, they get mad because they think you, you're trying to ride them, that you own them, that something's wrong with them, that they're less than because they're not as spiritual as you are. And so they end up, and this is what happens to many men, they end up rejecting the things of God. Gives room for what? The enemy to step right on in and say, man, that, that, that's, man, that ain't about nothing. Man, they all hypocrites down there. They lies, hypocrites, they hustling. Man, they, they, they mess around with each other. They, man, they don't even believe any of that. And you know, and I, I talk to people and, and they'll say that. They're, oh man, man, they down there, man. Man, everybody at church, man, they this, 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 this. I said, don't forget they liars. Yeah, man, that's what I'm talking about. Don't forget, man, they probably, you know, they uh, adulterers and that, and fornicate. Yeah, man, see, that's why I don't trust no church folk. Man, that's what I'm telling you. But I say, that's where they need to be. I say, this is a hospital for sick folks. They get your friends and say, you sick. You just, no. <laughs> Yeah, it's for sick people, and that's what Jesus said. He said, is that, that, that the church is for sick folks. If you're not sick, you don't need to be here. If something ain't wrong with you, you need to keep on walking. Heal thyself, physician. <laughs> and so you see that, that people are, are, are studying, um, uh, rejecting many times because we don't know how to communicate properly with folks. And so they don't get it right away. We get mad and we like, man, I'm not going to deal with them anymore. And the enemy just comes in because division's there. Amen? I can't tell you how many times I've done it. When I was young, I've done, I run people off from the gospel, you know, with just foolishness, you know, because they wasn't thinking the way I was. But as you grow, you understand that, guess what? You got to come at it a different way. Amen? Jesus was a master at that. He didn't even, he wasn't even talking about that. He, he started talking about the weather and he talked about the grass and he talked about the animals and, you know, next thing you know, boom, he got them, man. He hooks them and reels them in. Then he starts explaining the kingdom. You know, the Bible says that those who are unbelievers uh, can't understand truly spiritual things. So if that person is not a believer and have an understanding of, of, of the word, you're going to have to kind of break that thing down and you're going to have to use some examples because they may not be flying high and understand the spiritual depths. Maybe where you are. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Watch this. Watch this. So he goes on to say, he talks about the next, the stony ground. And so here is, here is this individual and, and they have received the word, all right? So you've gone in, and I'm going to use this. So we've gone in and we've extended the word of God either through deed or action or whatever the case may be. But watch this. It falls on a rocky place. So they hear the word. Now, this reminds me of Kim folks. <laughs> Boy, Kim folks be like, yeah, I'm so proud of you. Yeah, you know. Okay. So they receive it. You know, friends from a uh, long time ago, from college and, and from high school, man, oh, that's what you're doing now? Yeah, man, I need to change. Yeah, man, I like that, man. Man, that's, you, that's good stuff, man, that's good stuff. That's how you're talking, right? And, and so it goes on to say they received it with joy. And see, a lot of us, we get fooled by that. Because we like, man, they be listening to you. Yeah, you know, they hem you up in the corner, you know. 
At the reunion? No. Anybody get hemmed up? No. <laughs> Hem you up in the corner, start asking all kind of questions and venting on you. So watch this. So they receive it with joy. But watch what it says in verse 21. It says, but since he has no root. So, so they like what you're saying, but because they either have not been in the word any time or they're not willing to make changes to invest to get a better understanding. It says that, that after a short period of time, it says that, that because of trouble and persecution comes by the word, he falls away quickly. And so that friend, that family member, who you said, man, you know what? I've been in church. These things turned around for me. Man, I'm telling you, yeah, man, I've been looking for a new start, man. God said, man, that's some good stuff. And I see you've done something in your life. You're like, yeah, man, you ought to come church with me, man. I'm telling you. They go home. They're like, man, I'm, they feeling good. And then they say, man, you know what? I'm not going to be at the game because I'm, I'm going to go to church. So, you know, give my tickets to somebody else. Man, what's wrong with you? Man, you, what, wait a minute, wait. You going to church, you know this is a playoff game, right? You going to church and you going to miss this game. Man, you crazy. You crazy. Man, I'm going I'm to sell your ticket. That's what I'm going to do. Man, well, you know, I know I paid a little bit for it, but, you know, I'm really trying to change my life. Man, ain't nothing wrong with you. Man, we've been like this. Man, what, when you go to work, you do this, you do that. What's wrong with you? What you talking about? Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right, man. I guess you're right. And stuff. Man, come on, man. Stop by the store and pick something up, man. Stop tripping. Yeah, all right, all right, I'll meet you there. That's right, man. I'll meet you there. I'll see you later. Then months later. You see them, how you doing? And they embarrassed or they, they don't want to talk to you. <laughs> they, looking at, they looking at everything. It's like you would have swore somebody dropped like a thousand nickels. They looking all on the ground. You're like, hey, hey, they looking down. They don't even want to talk to you any right now. But you have to understand what you're dealing with. But many times when that happens, we get frustrated. And we say, I just wasted my time. Man, I ain't, I'm not helping them ever again. Because I spent two hours talking to them on the phone. I went over to their house that night. I prayed with, no, y'all ain't been through that. <laughs> I've been through that. They not here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he prayed with them, did all that. And then I saw them right back out there. They said they was coming to church. They didn't even show up. Man, watch this. So. So that uh, particular situation uh, initially looks good. Amen? Amen? But the problem is, is that it hadn't been proven yet. Okay? So you got to take it at face value, you know. And, and this is why when you give, whatever you give, you don't give with strings attached. Amen? Give what you can afford to give. I'm talking about time resources, emotional energy. Give what you can afford to give. Don't give what you can't afford to give. Amen? Amen. <laughs> uh-huh. Because, see, some, some people, uh, some situations, people want to stay in an elementary state. They don't want them to grow. They don't want to grow. They don't want it to change. They like living a certain way. They like things being status quo. But you in here trying to shake it up and you trying to grow and you investing all this energy and money you giving to them and, and you just saying, I'm going to support them, I want them to change. But you just throwing it on bad ground after bad ground. <laughs> Watch what he says. He, he goes on to say uh, this third type. And I'm just talking about these four different areas we tend to run into that frustrate us. At least three of them frustrate us. Uh, and he talks about this, uh, this, the word that fell on uh, among the thorns, all right? So watch this. This is good ground, okay? It's some good ground. It's fertile. You see it growing. The person hears it, and, and there's growth there, all right? So you, you talk to them, uh, or you help them out, and there was return. People acted right. You know, they did show up to church, right? They, they did, you know, try to change and start doing better. And you were feeling good about yourself. 
you know, and you're feeling good about them. And, and so, but the problem is, is that life happens. Can somebody say amen? amen? Life happens, and these are those thorns. It says, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth or riches choke it, making it unfruitful. Can I tell you that there are a lot of people in church right now, in churches all over, who are right in this situation, is that they have not cleared out the thorns and thistles out of their life. And so, so remember we talked about you got to make a choice. We talked about making a choice. Either you're, you're going to be, you know, uh, so generously or you're going to be stingy or sparingly in what you do. A lot of people have not cleared out and made that choice about how they're going to give. And so here are the thorns of life that grow up, and it says it chokes out. And just, it just starts to tighten up around you. And so, I, and again, you see people in church, in churches all over, this happens to them. They mean well. They sign up for everything, don't make anything. Boy, they be on the sign-up sheet. You know, all right, brother, sister, cool. All right, all right, be here at such, 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 such. They like, oh, I'm going to be here. I wouldn't miss it. Never make it. <laughs> Pastor be carrying stuff by himself, sweating. <laughs> hey, too close to home, huh? Okay. <laughs> Just say amen. Just say amen. And, and so, 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 so we all go through this. And we let life choke us, and we start saying it's work, and, and it's, it's kids, and it's this, and it's that, and, and it's on and on and on and on, but we seem to be able to make all this other stuff. <laughs> we make all this other stuff, but when it comes to the things of the Lord, it's always an excuse. But you know what I always say? You do what you want to do. Amen. But watch this. What you won't do, you'll do for love. <laughs> Man, that song is so true. If you love Jesus, oh, you do all kinds of stuff for Jesus. Boy, you prioritize Jesus just like that if you love him. And, and according to your level of love is going to reflect your commitment toward the things of God, your obedience toward the things of God and in the things of God. Amen? Amen. Hey, I still got some friends in here, right? We still friends? Yes. Still got some friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. So, so, uh, so we have to make sure that, you know, our motives, that when we sow and we give, watch this, that there are no strings attached, that our motives are pure. That when we give, when we, and, and watch this, and I think this is especially, you know, and, and, I, and this is especially for, for people in, in, in churches because this happens when you come in and you want to give and you just want to, man, I, I want to pay my tithes and my offering and I want to give a special seed to support the kids and support this and support that. And, and, and soon as you're in the middle of writing and you start thinking about my bills, I want to go out later. <laughs> I want to take a trip, you know, all these things. Now, you ain't taking that trip till next year, but you're talking about, I, I probably won't need to start saving now. <laughs> so maybe I need, to, um, I need to go grocery shop and get some extras, you know, and hair and clothes and shoes. <laughs> well, y'all young, man. <laughs> hair is a big issue. <laughs> People be putting hair on layaway. Should I move on from that? <laughs> oh, boy. But they start, you start thinking, and remember that the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of wealth and rich, it just starts to choke and constrain. And, and I can't tell you how many times in the past that I've seen checks scratched out with the dollar amount scratched out. So you see they write one thing, then they scratch it out and shrink that figure down. <laughs> Why are you going to turn that in? Why didn't you just write another check? <laughs> Let me drop it a little bit. Let me mark that out. And they initial it. And 
I'm going out to eat later, you know. I can't get that much, you know. But you know, the Bible says that, that God loves a cheerful giver. And so, so I am, I'm thankful. Um, and I don't mind people like that. You know why I don't mind people like that? Because at least they're honest enough to know, you know what? I don't need to give that. I ain't feeling that. <laughs> I'm cool with that, all right? Watch this. Let me, let me go back to, let's go back. We're almost done. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I, I just want to bring it to full scope. If we look at, um, if we look at verse number 9, Okay. Matter of fact, I'm going to roll in uh, to verse number nine. And that comes, this is out of Psalms 112, uh, which is really a, a great psalm for men. It's kind of like the Proverbs 31 for guys. All right. Psalms 112. Uh, and it says, um, and so it says, I'm starting at verse number. It says, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you. Okay. Grace, unmerited favor. All right. So God is able to do it. Didn't say he was going to do it, but he's able to do it. Let's see why he's able to do it. He's able to make all grace abound you so that all things at all times, having all that you need, you will uh, abound in every good work. All right, so if you're talking about doing some good work, God's all for giving you some favor, Amen. some grace. Amen? Amen? See these stipulations here? He so sparingly reaps sparingly, so generously reap generously. But if you are that generous person, then God is able to make his grace, his undeserved favor, unmeritorious work. He's able to make it abound in whatever, wherever, however, so that you're able to do every good work that you're setting out to do. Watch this. He said, as it is written, he has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Then, then watch this. Psalms 112 is talking about that man, that righteous man. That righteous person, that he has scattered abroad his gifts, so he's just not giving it to his homeboy, trying to get a favor and all this other kind of stuff. He doesn't mind spreading it out and giving it to the other people. He's generous to everybody and to the poor. Wow. Now, the poor doesn't mean like you're just totally bankrupt, but there are people who need encouragement. They're emotionally poor. Amen? Spiritually poor. His righteousness or righteousness means God's way. Uh, his godly way endures forever. Man, he is set. He has made up his mind to be and to act like Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, let me keep on going. And he says, now he who supplies seed, and this is God, <clears throat> to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge your harvest. Uh, uh, the harvest of your righteousness. Now, now, of course, encompassed in, in that is money and, and, and your actions and your favor and all this kind of stuff, but it's not just money. And so I, I hope that the, the church would get that, that in their heads because if we don't, then we'll think that, you know what, if I don't give them, you know, well, you know, um, you know, I don't, you know, ain't nothing good don't happen to me, or, you know, and, and, and so the church is caught up on throwing money at all the problems. That's the world. You can't throw money at everything. Can somebody say amen? amen? You can't throw money at your kid and expect to have a good kid or your marriage. Amen? You can't do that. You got to get in there and do some righteous work. Amen? You got to train them. You got to raise them in the way that they should go. You got to love them like Christ loved the church. Amen? Money can't buy, buy you love. <laughs> Let me keep it going. Watch this, watch this, watch this. All right, so, so he's able to enlarge your harvest of your righteousness. Wow. So he's able to bring back a bigger return. He's able to give you a bunch of seed, whatever that seed is, so that you can sow more, so you can give more. He'll give you the energy to put up with them. He'll give you the, the resources, amen, to sow into the church and still live. Watch this, amen. Watch this. Um, you will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. So you won't be writing and crossing out checks. 
<laughs> and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Wow. That your generosity will give a return. Amen. Let me keep on going and we're going to go down to 15 and I'm done. Let me read quickly because our time's almost up. And he says, um, this service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, uh huh, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God because of the service by which you have proved yourself. Men will praise God for your obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else and in their prayers for you. Their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Wow. All he's asking us to do is to be more generous, generous across the board. That when you're talking about sowing, you're talking about sowing your finances, you're talking about sowing your time, your talent, your resources, your knowledge. And when you do those things, God will increase you in every area. It's not just one area, but it's in all areas. Why? The end game is for us to what? Draw people to Christ. So people will look upon us and say, God is so good. How can you be so generous and God is so good? So my hope is that we'll have a different attitude about how we sow and a freedom about sowing our finances, a freedom about sowing our talent, a freedom about sowing our, our time. Amen? Why? Because we want to see more people come to Christ. We want to be example. Give God a chance to be a blessing in your life. Amen? How can you receive with a closed fist? If you let it go, God can put something back in it. Amen? Amen? Amen. Well, praise God. I hope that, um, you know, God bless you tonight. Think about these things. It's part of our maturity in Christ. Amen? As believers, the more you fall in love with Christ, the more given you ought to be because he was given. Our Father's giving. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen.